Andy from Incredible Edible Wakefields and today this is Tutorial 8 in our Stay at Home Grow Your Own. So today we're going to be doing tomatoes. The variety we've got here is the Zala, which is a heritage variety that somebody gave me a couple of years ago. They're a nice little uh, Chevy tomato, like a dark, really green one um, that really flavours them. Other equipment we're going to need, we've got our just a seed dispenser or a bit of paper just to tap your seeds out into when they come out of the pack and just so we can uh, know where they are and we can control so we know it's onto the compost got a marker pen or pencil for labelling up scissors for opening our seed packs a little watering can for watering or the water bottle or soft pot bottle with some pin holes in the top just as good sieving the compost onto the seeds or a colander if you don't have a sieve. Containers wise, one option if you don't have plant pots at home. You've got an old quite aptly organic chopped tomato tin here. I've just used a hammer and a sharp pair of scissors there, just to knock a few holes in that for drainage. And this is a tuna or a salmon tin, which will work quite nicely as a saucer just to stop the water draining through onto your windowsill when you get this started off. Other option is you can just use a small plant pot or this is a little rice bowl from a takeaway to use as a saucer again just to capture the water. The trick with these is try not to use pots that are too big when you're sowing the seeds because the seed will want to draw water up and if you put water in the bottom of these and you've got too big a pot then it's unlikely the seed will stay damp so water won't be able to draw it up and, and wet the full compost so I'll we'll start off with a smaller pot and we'll then pick these out into bigger pots as the seedlings grow. And the other thing we've got here is just a couple of pot bottles just that we can use as little mini greenhouses. If where you are it's still quite cool at night you might just want to give them a little bit of protection as they start to grow. So what we've got here, got there, pot cold cut there, we'll sit over the top when we've got our seedling. That'll act as a little greenhouse on that one. Alternatively with this one we just cut one a little bit smaller, just to the right size there, and that can sit on top. Again, just give it a little bit of protection. So, I'm going to take our tomato tin, fill that with compost, fill it right to the top first of all, and then press it down. Some of you will know we need the compost to be nice and compact, so that the roots from the seedlings can get into contact with the compost and get out the most nutrients and the moisture. So just watch your fingers on the edges of the pins in case they're a little bit sharp. Right, next job, got tomatoes. Seeds are quite small so give them a bit of a tap. Make the two of the seeds at the bottom end so we don't cut through them by accident or end up losing them as we cut open the packet. Yeah. We're going to use the paper just to tap the seeds out. Make sure there's nothing else in there first. Anyway, I've got about six seeds in there. Today I'm only going to sow a couple into this container and um, then if they don't both germinate at least we've got a double die chance of success uh, but if they both germinate we can always pick one of them out into another container later on so we just use this just to tap that off two seeds there with a little bit of distance between them going to get our sieve a bit of compost on top there and we only want the same thickness of compost the thickness of the seed itself, so only a fine spot in here. Just give them a shake until you can no longer see the seed. There we are, nicely covered. And the compost there is nice and fine, so make sure we haven't got any big chunks that are going to sit on top of the seed and stop them germinating properly. We'll get our little watering can. So we'll just put that in the saucer first. So that sits just nicely in there. So we've got the holes in the bottom of the tin there, so any excess water is going to drain through into the saucer and make sure that the compost can drop before it needs them. It's a nice watering to start with. Just soaking the seed through as well as temperature and the darkness of being under the compost that starts to feed off and to germinate. So we give it a good soaking to start with, uh, but after that we just want to keep it damp and just so that they're feeding off just enough water. Labels wise, can use little plastic ones. We've been trying to use lolly sticks instead of recent years just to reduce our reliance on plastic. But if you haven't got anything at home, what we can also do is cut the bottom out of a margarine tub or an ice cream tub and make little fun labels out of those. 
So we're just going to label this up now. So that's tomato, rosala. Some people might want to put a, a date on the other side so they know when it was sowed if you're doing a lot of sowing. We'll rub that one in the side there. And there we have it. That's how it Cherry tomato plant. Keep that well watered on the windowsill. You could always green out over that to start with, just to raise the temperature a little bit. But just be careful once your seedling does germinate that if you've got really sunny days, uh, you may end up scorching the plant by amplifying the or magnifying the sun to some light. So once your seedling has started, it's better to set off during the day and maybe just put it on in the night time just to keep it a little bit warmer. This has been our Stay Home Grow Your Own tutorial on tomatoes. I hope you enjoyed it.